Um, I want to tell you a story about um, um, a study we've, uh, we've completed. Uh, but first, I think uh, I'll say a little bit of, about uh, some of our previous studies in this area as a bit of background to uh, introduce you to the, uh, the study I'm going to talk about that compares uh, uh, interesterified fats with, uh, with palm oil. Our <coughs> previous uh, uh, studies have shown that, um, that when you uh, uh, feed high versus low palmitic acid at a high or a low intake of um, linoleic acid, that at a high intake of linoleic acid, there's no effect of the, the high palmitic acid in the diet on, uh, on LDL cholesterol levels in normal subjects that have, were actually um, uh, in our Canadian population having uh, cholesterol levels that are in the low side of, of normal. And when those subjects consume 3% uh, uh, of energy as linoleic acid, then uh, challenging them with palmitic acid uh, raises the uh, LDL cholesterol level somewhat. And we've also uh, looked at this in uh, subjects that were just marginally hypercholesterolemic when uh, they were recruited um, to test whether uh, they would respond to palmitic acid at a, a high intake of uh, linoleic acid, high being 10%. Um, and th those subjects um, actually don't uh, respond by increasing their cholesterol level when they're given a, a high intake of palmitic acid if they have a, um, um, a high intake of linoleic acid. Now we've, um, after that, we showed that this, that there was a transition in, in the level of linoleic acid in the, the sense that if subjects had uh, less than 6% um, linoleic acid in the diet, then they began to respond to the palmitic acid. And if, if their intake level of linoleic acid was above 6%, um, then they did not respond to the increase in palmitic acid in the diet. And this, this is important because um, in our North American diets, and certainly our Canadian diets, most of us have intakes that are above 6% linoleic acid. We actually have fairly high intakes of linoleic acid in the diet. And, you know, this increase in, in uh, cholesterol level as a function of the uh, uh, linoleic acid um, and is, is challenged by a higher uh, palmitic acid in the diet is due to or seemingly due to an increase in endogenous uh, synthesis of cholesterol. And the synthesis of cholesterol is something that actually has a diurnal rhythm and seems to respond on a day-to-day -day basis in people to their dietary intake. Uh, in, in collaboration with uh, Dr. Sundram, we also showed that the um, increase in plasma cholesterol that occurs when you, when subjects consume uh, a diet that's higher in trans fatty acids is indeed due to uh, um, an increase in the fractional synthesis rate uh, for cholesterol. And, uh, and the fractional synthesis rate is then, uh, you could, you could uh, look at it as a percent of the pool um, per day that was synthesized de novo. So the objective of the experiment I want to tell you about was to assess if consumption of a um, usual higher amount of saturated fatty acid in the form of interesterified fat results in a higher uh, cholesterol or LDL cholesterol level or cholesterol synthesis in comparison to palm oil. So we're in effect testing whether interesterified fat is more cholesterolemic than than uh, palm oil. And the, the level of saturate in the diet is set at 10 to 11, 10 or so percent. 
um, as was our target. And um, as you heard earlier this morning, the the difference being that that uh, for palm oil the, the saturates are in the one and the three position, and for the interesterified fat as a, a significant percentage of the saturates that are present in the two position of the triglyceride where uh, linoleic acid is normally present. Okay, so our, some basics about our, subject, our study design. <clears throat> we uh, initially recruited about uh, 30, uh, recruited 30 subjects, and this was at the time in Canada when uh, uh, trans fatty acids was being heavily debated in the media, and um, this actually um, caused us issues because the Three treatments we were proposing uh, were basically high in saturated fat uh, from palm oil and um, or from interesterified fat. And then we had another uh, diet treatment, which is a sort of a, I guess you'd call it a negative control uh, containing a, an amount of trans fatty acids. And these were all fed at a higher level of uh, linoleic acid intake of about uh, uh, the target that we were trying to achieve was seven to eight percent. And the diet treatments were two weeks. And um, we had 15 subjects uh, complete all aspects of the study. And the data I'll show you is based on those 15 subjects. And it, it was uh, happening at a time when there was lots of talk about trans fatty acids and interesterified fats in the media. And uh, it was uh, actually very difficult uh, for us because while the subjects are blinded, um, they're, and the, the study is a double-blind, randomized format, um, we have what's called informed consent. So they do know, uh, well, they don't know the composition of the treatment they're on. They know the overall composition of the treatments they're going to go through. And so the subjects' responses were, were for some of them was, well, palm oil might not be really very good because it's high in saturated fat. And we know from what we're hearing that trans fatty acids or partially hydrogenated fats are not good. And so how can, you know, fully hydrogenated fats that are in the other treatment, how can that be better? And um, this caused uh, this, I think, uncertainty uh, in the minds of the subjects caused us to have a fairly high dropout rate during the, the study as it progressed. Um, the other aspect that we, we did in this study was we used our uh, deuterium water labeling procedures to, to measure cholesterol synthesis. And this basically involves, um, you know, you bring the subject in um, in the morning um, and they get a, um, they drink a dose of deuterium labeled water as a stable isotope of hydrogen. And so it's, I mean, it's completely safe in that sense. And this rapidly labels up all of the body water pools. And so everywhere that uh, cholesterol synthesis occurs, uh, you get a certain incorporation of deuterium and instead of, of um, of the lighter isotope of, of hydrogen into the cholesterol molecule, and then when you isolate uh, cholesterol and measure the enrichment by uh, GC uh, isotope ratio mass spectrometry uh, procedures, you can get a measure of the deuterium incorporation. Okay, so the, the subjects we recruited were um, um, uh, of varying uh, ages, but they were of uh, basically higher body fat content, and, and this should be 1.6 instead of 16. Um, they're heavier subjects and with a higher BMI, and so these would be subjects that uh, we were trying to target individuals that were potentially at risk of uh, metabolic syndrome. So we were choosing subjects that were, uh, uh, were heavier and had a um, 
higher body fat content. And the body fat content we measured by, by DEXA. Um, and so at baseline, these were uh, subjects that had um, essentially normal uh, lipid levels, uh, although the, uh, the total cholesterols would be um, in the you know, upper end of the range of, of cholesterol in, in our population. They wouldn't be high, but uh, they would actually be subjects that would be um, getting, being considered for advice or um, possibly some form of intervention. The, the fatty acid content of the dietary treatments, um, I should say that they're all normal foods, and so the subjects consumed three meals a day that we uh, prepared for them. And, um, and they had a fatty acid composition, um, as, as illustrated in, in this slide. The, uh, uh, I should say about 4% of the... Um, of the fat was, um, uh, of the saturated fat came from the interesterified fat, um, or uh, about 4% uh, of this number was trans fatty acid. So uh, the, uh, the, the dietary fat intake was all uh, the, sort of typical of what you would could achieve by uh, uh, selection of of uh, normal foods and fats in in Canada at a at a thirty percent of fat intake. Um, well, there was no effect of uh, of the diet fat treatment on uh, um, on. Um, of course, on body weight during the study, so that was that was pretty consistent. Um, and if we look at the uh, the uh, some of the biochemical variables we mentioned, um, <clears throat> so we measured the uh, glucose and insulin. We actually did uh, glucose uh, tolerance tests, and um, we measured the uh, C-reactive protein and some of the pro-inflammatory markers that are um, notable in uh, metabolic syndrome. And, and these were basically all unaffected by the, the um, dietary fat treatment. Um, and if we look at the, uh, the lipid levels, um, Looking at the, that, um, the, the cholesterols, the LDL and HDL cholesterol and triglycerides, these two were in, uh, overall unaffected by the dietary fat treatment. But um, uh, I guess one of the things I should point out that if we look at this as a, as a change from uh, these, these variables from um, the baseline diet the subjects would have been normally consuming. And, here, the value is expressed as a percent of change from baseline. Um, it's, what you find is that, that um, all of their lipid levels go down somewhat for the most part. And so, well, the subjects might have been consumed, uh, concerned about what they were eating in our, our study here. They were actually eating a, a, uh, a diet that was less cholesterolemic than what they were normally eating. And that's pretty typical of what you find when you um, bring them in and feed them in a, a consistent fashion. Um, now looking at the fractional synthesis rate for cholesterol, um, <clears throat> I think the important thing here to point out is that for the LDL free cholesterol and cholesterol ester fractional synthesis rate, the um, at the uh, five-hour postprandial period, so this is now when the lipids are about as high in the plasma as they're going to get. So it's so it's a postprandial measure. Um, we find that that um, the interesterified fats give a 
higher value for the fractional synthesis rate that's, that's greater than uh, two standard deviations above the, um, the mean for the, the palm oil treatment. And uh, for the most part, pretty comparable to the, the trans treatment. So the interesterified fa uh, fat response is greater um, in the five hour postprandial um, period. And I, I should indicate that you know, the subjects uh, start the, the day with the test meal, which is basically the breakfast of the dietary treatment they were on, and this is one that provides about uh, a third of the fat uh, calories in that meal, uh, so a third of the daily fat calories. Um, if we look at now the fasting fractional synthesis rate, um, it's, it's basically... Uh, um, a little bit different than the postprandial. The 24-hour values for fasting are, are uh, for the most part, quite similar between the diet and fat treatments. And here, if we, this slide illustrates the fatty acid composition of the plasma VLDL after um, um, each of the diet treatments. And what it really illustrates is that that uh, we probably achieved the objective of keeping our uh, major fatty acid composition similar for the fatty acids we were trying to, uh, to achieve in our dietary design where we wanted mainly to look at the differences between where they're located in the triglyceride as opposed to having major differences in fatty acid composition. And, and so for 16-0, 18-0, in 18.2, these were quite similar in the plasma VLDL triglyceride between the diet treatments, and and I think that achieves sort of demonstrates that we achieved the that aspect of our dietary design. So we conclude that the <clears throat> the analysis of the metabolic hormones, um, glucose, insulin, and the the pro-inflammatory markers in the lipoprotein cholesterol levels indicated no um, effect of the dietary fat treatment, but there was an effect of the um, hydrosterified fat treatment on cholesterol synthesis um, in the postprandial period. And it seems to be a more favorable effect of palm oil on the cholesterol synthesis rate, i.e. being lower uh, compared to the other fats tested. And, that we probably need to focus more on this in the early postprandial period because in almost all of the studies that are, that are done, um, the effect of dietary fat treatment is actually looked at in the fasting state. And quite frankly, that's a state that most of us are never in for very long each day. Um, so when palm oil and interesterified fats are compared, the uh, potential for uh, interesterification to produce uh, different stereoisomers of triglyceride that are not formed, found in uh, normal foods is, is really large. And it, it, uh, we're consuming things that um, we really don't know what they do and, and um, um, we still haven't demonstrated much about whether they're different or not, but I think this is something that that uh, needs to be examined, and I would argue that it needs to be examined in the postprandial period. And thank you for your attention.